Welcome to the Tish WNT studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. Uh, I'm Steve Arabato. It is my pleasure to welcome Tom Burry, who is uh, construction manager, the Food Network's Restaurant Impossible, owner of uh, Division 9 Design and Construction. How are you doing? Great. Great. For those who don't know uh, Restaurant Impossible, describe it. We're coming into a restaurant. We're, we're saving a restaurant. So you've got a restaurant that's failing. They ask us for help. We come in. Our host, uh, Robert Irvine, who's a super talented chef, we come in and do the whole thing. So he's coming in. He's changing the atmosphere, telling, the, telling them what they're doing wrong, changing the food. And then me and a designer are coming in, and we're changing the look of the restaurant. So it's from a top to bottom change on the entire space. It's kind of, it's, and we do this in 48 hours, which is... I still don't know how we do it. But. Now, it's interesting. You came to us. Uh, our friends over at the New Jersey Institute of Technology mm -hmm. told us about you. And I'm curious, when you were graduating from there with a degree in? Architecture. Did you say to yourself, I'm going to wind up on television doing this? Absolutely not. What was the plan? <laughs> it's You know, at NJIT, I'd, I'd love the school. I work with them all the time. And you know, you graduate from college and you've got a degree in architecture, so you're looking, you're looking at the road one way. I'm, I'm going to be an architect. I'm going to work in an architecture firm. And I went and tried that, and it's just like I kept, I kept veering off in different ways. And I started my own construction company and started doing sure. all these different things. And then the TV show just kind of spawned off of that whole thing. It How? was, Yeah, I was working with designers here in New York City. We're doing restaurants. Uh, they got cast on the show to be the designers for the show. And they asked me to come along, and they told me this crazy concept. It was the pilot. Uh, two days, ten thousand dollars. We're going to redo this restaurant. And I'm looking at them, and oh, we're... back up. Tell everyone again the concept. Over forty-eight hours. Forty-eight hours. So it's two. So they say two days, which is forty-eight hours. We don't even get that. It ends up being about thirty-five, th maybe thirty-six hours. By the time you get in there, set up. You know, you're doing TV stuff as well. So you're cutting in. We got to stop. You can't do construction Stop, while you're filming. Stop, do that again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or work, guys, everybody work quietly in the background. I've never seen construction <laughs> that's quiet, but we do it somehow. Uh, with two days, $10,000. So I came in, uh, we shot the pilot. First time I ever did a TV show, I did it just for fun. I figured we go in, you know, the guys would love it, we'll try it. And uh, it was a hit. I, I, I became great friends with the host, Robert Irvine. We're still we're great friends right now. And uh, gosh, it's been 100 and, 150 episodes. It's been since 2011. How has it, it changed your professional and personal life? It's, it's impacted everything. It's impacted everything I do. I mean, first off, especially my career goals, like you just said, I graduated and I, I thought I'd be an architect and then, and then I started a construction company. I was just like, well, if I get a good construction company, I can make some money, I'd be happy doing that. And now it's opened up all these other avenues that we're doing. But the show itself, what we really do for people and the, the, the limited time frame and the limited budget it's, it's amazing, and it's, uh, it, like I said, when I was doing the pilot, I thought it was impossible. I'm like, you can't do that, right? I mean, That's I do the name. I, you know, Rest exactly, impossible. exactly, and I do the, work the, in New York City. How, how do these, sorry for interrupting, how do these people get picked? <clears throat> they, a lot of them apply online, I believe it is, and the producers kind of sift through them and decide who it, you know, I don't get any say in that whatsoever. So but, you go into a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And it looks like what? It, they're usually a disaster, the worst restaurant you can imagine. Carpets, smells bad. The, the kitchen's a, you know, a disaster, and the owners don't realize wallpaper, ceiling tiles falling down, and they think the restaurant's great. So they walk in, they go, I don't know why nobody's coming into my restaurant. I can't imagine why people don't eat here. And, and they think the food's great, you know, and it's not. Oh, hold, hold on, do you guys do a makeover physically as well as the whole, I mean, everything? Everything. From what to, describe the, the whole from, thing. From, from the food, the service, the way the, the, way the place functions, how servers get to table, to the actual look of the place. I mean, if you think about it, all of those, you go to a restaurant, every single one of those pieces makes a difference whether you're going to come back or not. And if one of those things fails, odds are you're probably not going to come back. So we, we spend a lot of time, you know, and, we, and again, it's time management because we're only there for two days. So we really focus on what's the worst thing in the restaurant. And we kind of work our way backwards and try to, try to fix it for these people. I'm curious about this. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of restaurants. You've worked around a lot of restaurants, mm -hmm. either here in New York City, New Jersey. You know this market well. What are the most common mistakes restaurant owners make that often cause them to fail? You know, it's t obviously, it, it, I'm, an, I'm an architect and a designer, so I, I love to look at the look of the, the, the design and the look of the restaurant. And that is a portion of it. 
Food is definitely number one, right? You're going to a restaurant, you're going to eat. I mean, you've been to a bunch of dive places, I'm sure, that have amazing food, and you keep going back because the food is just fantastic. So if you don't have that fantastic level of food, the restaurant also has to look and feel comfortable. The biggest mistake I think most, most restaurateurs make is the comfort level. If people come in and they, and people aren't designers, they walk into a place, they just feel uncomfortable. I mean, you've been to a restaurant where for whatever, whatever reason, you just didn't like it in there. And that could have been, it's too loud, uh, or the lighting. Lighting is a big one, which I always say, because you go in, it's too bright or it's too dark, and it's just not comfortable, it doesn't work. And the, the loud is the biggest problem, because you go in and you're, you're trying to have a conversation with somebody, you're paying a lot of money for a meal, and you can't even hear anybody, it doesn't work. What about when you're sitting here, and there with your wife, and the people are sitting like six inches away from you? <laughs> well, like, you know, that's a, whole, that? that's a whole different thing. You know, New York City, it, it, it works a whole different way than the rest of the country, but some people, I guess, and but that works that works too because certain places like New York City, people have a comfort level. They're they're a little bit more comfortable being closer to people. How about in Jersey? We we don't like that. In Jer in Jersey, it's a little bit more spread out. But I'll, I'll tell you what, you go into the middle of the country, <laughs> that table's got to be four feet away, or they are not sitting down. They will not sit there. So interesting, culturally, mm -hmm. geographically, restaurants and the way they're designed, they're different. A hundred percent different. A hundred percent different. Have you ever sat at a, um, uh, like a big banquet table or a chef table, right? Where you're sitting, you're sitting two by two by two. Yeah. You're with somebody else and there's somebody else next to you. That works here. That works in New Jersey. That might work in some cities. How about Wisconsin? Absolutely not. No way. They will not sit at that table. They will not sit. Even if you leave a space between the two, it's considered the same table. They won't sit there because it's the same surface top. So they're not comfortable with it. And that's, and that's something I learned because, again, I'm a Jersey guy and I do all my work in New York City or most of it, and I learned so much just traveling the country going, why, why, I don't understand, why don't you feel comfortable? It's, you're three feet away, what's the same table? I, I guess, you're right, I mean, it is technically the same table. Very different, uh, tell mm -hmm. us about your construction company, Division Nine Design and Construction. Division Nine is, uh, you know, me and my partners, we're all architects, and uh, we started it because of a, just a need for, for a good construction company that was gonna follow the plans all the way through. And we work on restaurants, and obviously with restaurants, there's a, it's a tough time frame. Because you got a restaurant tour, he's opening, he's gotta open on time. Uh, you're trying to, there's a lot of custom details because every restaurant's gotta to top every other restaurant. You can't go buy something off the shelf, you gotta build it custom. So we spend a lot of time doing that. And because we're architects, we pride ourselves on you know, focusing on those details and making sure they're right and not just doing it for the bottom dollar and getting out of there quick and you know, cheap, making it cheap and walking away and going, well, we've, you know, it's close enough. We, we pride ourselves on getting the next job off of that first restaurant we did. Before I let you out here real quick, uh, with Restaurant Impossible, you turn these restaurants around, make them look a lot better, mm -hmm. set them up to succeed. To what degree do you have a sense that these folks who run these restaurants keep them functioning and moving in the right direction? I, I mentioned before, I, we've, we're over 150 restaurants right now. And I, I believe our success rate was somewhere over 70%. And really? think about it, think about that. So you've got, we, we went to see 150 failing restaurants. Failing. There was some we had to pay the gas bill that day. Oh. Some we had, the, the power wasn't on. That bad. And at least 70% of them move forward. And some people, you know, they're just, they're just hard-headed. They don't want change. So you, you offer them change, you show them change, and they go right back. And there's nothing we can do about that. I mean, I can't. And some people are just too far behind. They just can't catch up. I mean, there's just nothing you can do. Some people make it out and they sell it. And maybe that's a win because guess what? Not everyone should be in the restaurant business. It's not cut out for them. No, no, absolutely not. Tom, you're doing good stuff. Construction manager, Food Network's restaurant impossible, and also owner of Division 9 Design and Construction, uh, and an alum of the great... New Jersey Institute of Technology. Good stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stay right there. One on one from the Tisch WNET studio here in New York City. We'll continue right after this. Thanks, Tom. Okay. That's great. One on one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, the North Ward Center, Josh S. Weston, the Russell Berry Foundation, Investors Bank, and by NJM. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, 
serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.